Hello, welcome to Forest Focus as Nottingham Forest slipped to 17th in the Premier League after their defeat to Tottenham on Friday night. Was it a good performance? Was it enough to sway anyone's opinion on Steve Cooper? And what has gone wrong for the Reds? Joining me to discuss all that and more is, first of all, a European Cup winning club legend in Gary Bertels. Gary, good morning. You well? Good morning. Not, not really. Full of cold again. I know, got, I know. You know. But hey. Well, you're, you're soldiering on, which we very much appreciate. So good to have you with us as ever. Our second guest is the scorer of some of the best goals you'll ever see at the city ground in Lewis McGugan. Morning, Lewis. How are you? Yeah, good morning. Not too, not too bad, thank you. Good, good. Greg's smiling. He knows what something's coming here. And our final guest is a former firefighter who was once sent off a side tackling a dog which ran onto the pitch during a game of five aside when he was a kid. Part of that's true. Morning, Greg. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd get away with it, but uh, being on a panel like this, I was saying a bit of an imposter syndrome today, but looking forward to it. No, no, it's good to have you with us as ever. In fact, you can kick us off um, as normal. Just give us your thoughts uh, on the game before we branch out from there. What, what did you make of Friday night? I was a, a, a unusually downbeat walking out the ground and I, I honestly thought that was it, obviously, waiting for the news Saturday morning. Uh, but I have just watched it back on Match of the Day and we were unlucky, weren't we? We just haven't got that finishing. You know, that what happened with Turner obviously was a bit of a travesty, he made some good saves, but then, yeah, you, you've got to be good for 100 minutes, haven't you, in these games, not just... 80 of them. Uh, so, yeah, it was just, we're in limbo, aren't we? And it's not a very nice feeling. So uh, we need to get sorted and we need to get sorted quick. And Bournemouth's a perfect opportunity for that. What did you make of it, Gary, in terms of, I suppose, the quality we had on the pitch? Did we play as well as we could against Tottenham? Did you expect anything more from us? How, how did you view it? I, before the game, I, I, I fancied it, so I must admit. Um because they play similar to Villa, and we know what we did at, uh, against them. The only team that can beat Villa at the moment. Um, but it's just that quality you're looking for in the final third. We get in good areas, and nothing happens. They had a lot of possession, Tottenham, in the first half. Son had a lot of possession, but we kept forcing him backwards. I thought we did all right defensively against them. But then, just when you think you've done a really good job, two minutes before half-time, you do that. You know, you've got to stop the cross firstly. You know, it's it's vital you close things down and don't allow that delivery to come in your box. We've done that, you know, quite a few times uh, this season and conceded. And we don't seem to learn the lesson. And the goalkeeper, again, for me, he, he was at fault for that one. You know, he, where was he? It was a six-yard box. I think Richarlison was expecting to get absolutely clattered. And you see the picture in the uh, one of the papers, and it's quite damning, you know, the goalkeeper coming out. Um, and he's not the biggest Richarlison, you know, and we, we give him a free header. And the second one, well, we just, you, what can you say about that? It's it, avoidable goals yet again. How many times do we have to keep saying avoidable goals? It's, it's really maddening. And there were, there were a few bright sparks in the, uh, in the performance, but I, like I said, before a ball was kicked, we had to get a, a quality striker, spend your money because they're the ones who keep you up. Um, and it, I just proved that in the final third. We just didn't have a great deal. And uh, keep, uh, he made a couple of decent saves, to be fair. Um, it, it, every, uh, people around me in the stand were saying, guys, just hit him again, you know. He, but you've got to get yourself in that position to be hit as a goalkeeper. And uh, it's it small margins, but, you know, their quality, you know, just prevailed in the end. What was your take on the performance in general, Lewis? And give us your kind of read on the first goal as Gary discussed there. How did you see it? Yeah, I think I think if you uh, if you look at the game on on Friday, I think if you look at it from a from a general point of view, I don't think the actual performance across the 90, 90 plus minutes was that bad. Uh, you, you look at Tottenham and and what they've done. I know they've been on a bit of a tricky uh, run, kind of leading up to it, and they've, they've lost a few games, but They've uh, they've really set set a tone in the Premier League this year, and they've and they've kind of gone through teams and ran over teams a lot. So I think you have to accept that uh, there was going to come, and they're a good team with good individual players. Uh, so I think as a as a collective whole, I don't think the performance was that bad. Uh, the reality is 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 whatever football, whatever level you play, the difference is both boxes and 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 
no matter how well you play, how how well you kind of keep possession, how well you you stay in games, uh, if you continually come up short in both boxes, you you'll continue to lose games, and that's just that's just football, and it it won't change, unfortunately. Uh, good you to join us, uh, 200 plus with us already in the first five minutes, which is great. Quick word for our sponsors, the Trent Navigation, and a different plug for them today. Uh, if you can't get tickets for Forest v Bournemouth, you could win them through the NAV. The links to do so are uh, in the description for this episode. You just have to follow them on Facebook or Twitter and then uh, share the post. So you get your name in the hat for a chance to see Forest v Bournemouth uh, on Saturday. And thanks again for the support of the NAV. Uh, very much appreciated and helps us put this uh, out as many times a week as we can for you. Uh, let's just move on to the manager situation then, Greg. Uh, I mean, for me, nothing's really changed because I thought we played pretty well. I think he's going to get the Bournemouth game. It kind of feels like this interminable cycle's carrying on a bit. Where are you at on Steve Cooper's situation? They just need to make things clearer for everyone. This limbo just doesn't help, does it? I, I thought after Friday, even though we played very well, we matched them for much of the game and... Cooper showed that he can change and adapt to, to whoever is playing. And it was it was a good performance, but he's obviously running out of time. And I, I did think, oh, if a new manager has been lined up, they'd want the Bournemouth game before the, the rest of the running. So if that isn't the case, which I obviously hope it isn't, then, you know, come out and say something. I just think it helps everyone if they come out and say, he's our manager, like for the, I don't know, for, at least for the Christmas period, forget about the, the stories and everything that's in and out all the time. But it's just, I just don't think it's a healthy situation. He he looks like he's feeling it, whether he, he says it or not. And, you know, watching it back on Friday and when the disallowed goal went in, his reaction after that, getting the crowd up and you could tell how much he wants it. And it looks like the players are playing for him. So, especially after Friday, after the way we performed, I'd like to think a decision has been made and it is, you know, we're sticking with him. It, we had this, uh, my mate Emma and myself had a bit of a discussion about XG. She sent me some XG stats on Friday and you know how much I uh, don't really get it and don't understand. But um, I was saying that it doesn't it doesn't really matter about the XG. You know, we, we lost 2-0. That's all the owner's going to see. But it isn't really about that, is it? It's about the chances created and all stuff like that. And it was a much better performance and much better against the best team that's played at the City Ground this season. So I know people have their own opinions and some people shout about them a lot more than others. And, you know, some of the stuff that's been online this weekend has been absolutely disgraceful. And I think a few people should be ashamed about that. But for me, you stick with the man who's done so much for this club, who's arguably been the best manager, the most successful manager we've seen since, you know, the Frank Clark era. And you give him as much chance as he needs, especially when they've put in the performance for him like they did on, on Friday, which could have gone completely different. What do you think, Gary? Because managers can't lose game after game after game. We've won winning 13 now. We were wretched against Everton and Fulham, but we've seen improvements in the last two games. Has that changed what you think about the manager? No, or not? I, I, I agree with Greg. I, I, I think it'd be crazy just to get rid of Steve Cooper now. Yeah, we're not winning games. Other teams, that's the problem. They're pick, we're the only team who aren't picking points up at the moment or wins up. You know, Luton, I, I've said this, this all the way along. I, I don't think Luton are that bad. I think they're punching above the weight. I think the manager's doing a great job there. And that's the problem. We're now fourth bottom. Everton, you know, after those 10 points, what a run they've been on under Sean Dyche. Um, yeah, so it's one win will, you know, I think pacify people. And that is possible against Bournemouth on uh, on Saturday. I'm actually doing the game for Sky. So uh, I'm, I'm just hoping that obviously um, it goes our way and uh, nothing happens to Steve Cooper before, you know, the Christmas comes. But, you know, you, you, football is what it is. And you, you understand people having their opinions like that when teams are on a bad run. You know, Manchester United, look at, you know, Ten Hag. Uh, you know, he's under massive pressure as well. But uh, Manchester United, what a point they got at Anfield yesterday. Those sort of points just takes the pressure off a little bit. 
but when you keep it, it's just so annoying for Steve and it's annoying for me as an ex-pro. I'm sure you're the same, Lewis. When you see continually the similar goals going in, I don't mind if somebody sticks one in the top corner for some 30 yards or, you know, they beat five men and then stick it in the back. You, you can't do sometimes anything about that. But we can do something about the goals we're conceding at the moment. That's the big disappointment for me. It's the Premier League. It's not the Championship anymore. And you are going to get punished more if you keep making those mistakes. And unfortunately, we keep making those mistakes. I suppose, Lewis, there's going to be, like Gary says, um, Everton fan. Uh, Forest fans are going to look at Everton and Luton and Fulham, who, you know, until Saturday were doing well, so they had a red card. And they're going to say, why aren't we doing better? Can you see where they're coming from? Or do you still think, like Gary says, one win changes this and Steve Cooper will, will turn it around if, if given time? Yeah, I think I think if you look at it, uh, sometimes football clubs can always have plans and, and ownerships and management. They can always have kind of a foundation what they want to do. But, a, but on Gary's point, when teams around you keep on winning, it changes everything because you you might have a you might have a structure and you might have a plan of you know what we might give the manager until January. Well, for for perfect example, if we don't win another game until the end of January and everyone else around us keeps picking up points that whole landscape of what you were thinking, you're in a completely different position. So I think when you when you look at it, I think that on the bigger picture, maybe I think the owner will want to give keep giving him time, maybe give him the window. But on Gary's point, if 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 we stop if we, if other teams around us keep picking up results uh and we're not, then it, it might come to the point where where there might has to be there might have to be a change. And that's just that's just football because otherwise, like I say, you continue, they're going to get dragged into it. Uh, six weeks ago, you probably wasn't looking at that close. Now you look at Everton's form, you look at Luton, keep picking up uh, the odd results. And, be, and now we know it, we, we're completely in a relegation. So football can, can continually change so quick. And no matter, sometimes you have a plan of action uh, every game and every weekend, that can, that can completely change. I suppose... There's a section of fans, Gary, who are going to say, Steve Cooper's the problem, get rid of Steve Cooper. I think that's oversimplifying a bit. I think we've got deeper issues than that. I mean, I was uh, in sending the notes out to you guys, you know, is it a one-year injury? Is it Cooper? Is it recruitment's not been right? We've got two goalies and neither of them look quite right so far. Certainly one of them doesn't. What's the... What's the big issue of why Forests have gone wrong this season? Because obviously it's gone pretty wrong so far overall. What's what's the big problems for you? Well, the, the start was not bad. It was quite, you know, we were, say, we were saying on the podcast, oh, the progression been made, the performances have been good. We only got beat by Arsenal by the odd goal. Uh, scored against Manchester United, should have won, should have won at West Ham, should have won at Palace. And all of a sudden it's, it's just gone uh, pear-shaped a little bit. I think... The, one of the big problems is we've got so many players in the in the current team who've not played in the Premier League before. And as I keep saying, the Premier League is the most brutal, unforgiving league in, in world football, as, as we're seeing. And when if you've got two or three players who are you know are not used to it, fine. But we've got more than that. And the big worry now is the uh, Africa Cup of Nations. You know, how many players are going to lose with, with that as well? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a concern. And when you're not looking like scoring, that's a concern as well. If you've not got a striker you, you trust to put out there, you know, we've seen Chris Wood on the on the bench, we've seen Origi on the bench, we've seen Alanga playing up front, and, and that's not his strength. Um, but, you know, what do you do? I mean, it's... I think that he was right to change the thing at the back, and I think that's worked well, although we've conceded goals again. But, you know, goals win games. Strikers, you know, are paid the most money because they do the most difficult job in football. And uh, at the moment, we haven't got somebody out there who's going to, you know, score us on a regular basis. Um, do you think there's goals in this team, Greg, uh, at all? And also, same, kind of the same question to you, what's the big issue that's gone so wrong recently? Uh, you can't ignore the fact Tyro's not playing and the results we get whilst Tyro's there no confidence in the goalkeepers as well. And I think that's a recruitment thing, isn't it? And it's such a shame because, <laughs> you know, they both seem like great guys and Turner's just got some brilliant shot stopping in him. If you did a, if someone did a reel of, you know, his, his saves from Friday, you think, God, oh, what a keeper. 
but you just cannot make those mistakes to make two mistakes within the space five seconds that creates a goal i think we've got to be looking as a priority at maybe scrapping the goalkeeper options in jan getting a new goalkeeper and another striker because as good as tyro is and as powerful and influential as he is when he plays you can't trust him to play more than a couple of months unfortunately he's just become he is injury prone isn't he with the what he's done with us and it, he's absolutely brilliant it's a brilliant when you see him on the on the team sheet but you know you've only got two or three games in him if you get a run out of him we're not concerned this season his, his gameplay everything he does the way he holds the ball up the way he scored like everything he's such a good player but he, he can't seem to get a run of games in so we've got to get a quality striker in and you know that's a yeah. recruitment issue isn't it yeah I, I think one of the big problems we're talking about problems is I mean Lewis will know again, um, when Brian Clough, you know, he used to have the spine of the team, the goalkeeper, your centre-halves, your centre-midfield and your striker. That's what you built around. Well, at the moment, the goalkeeping position's not strong. No. Uh, defensively, we've not been good enough uh, defending things that should be defended. Your centre and midfield, you know, it's it's been changing. Sangari's been in there, the eights has been in there. You know, we have your different captains. And, you know, the, the final piece of the spine is the striker who we haven't got. So when you, you've not got a completely, you know, solid spine in your team, then I, I think that's why results will go against you. Because, you know, you, you need consistency and that's what we haven't got at the moment. Is that on the manager, though, Gary, to, you know, find, pick a consistent 11? Because we obviously don't know what our best 11 is. We've got so many players, people listening in the comments, so many players that are out of favour. Is it Steve's fault that we don't have a consistent team or is it because we've got so many players and we're, we're throwing stuff against the wall to see what sticks? Yeah, you, when, when results are going against you, it's it's really tempting to change things you know, on a regular basis. Um, and, I'm, you know, that's what we've seen. Uh, he changed the system round, which I think was the right thing. We look more uh, solidified. You know, he looks a lot more... Oh, he's gone. It's, it, it's about picking your best 11. And I, 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 the thing I, uh, with Steve, what is his best 11 in his own mind? Um, you know, we've seen Warren and McKenna, you know, um, disappear. Uh, they're not playing any part at the moment. Um, yeah, it's... Ryan Yates wasn't in favour, now he is. So, yeah, I think you've got to get your, your first 11, your strongest 11 in your mind and say, right, let's give that, that that 11, if they stay fit, you know, three games or whatever, four games. You need more than that. But, you know, when you're in trouble, you know, just say three or four games and, and see how it goes. But you know, with the mistakes, you know, the goalkeeper's made, nobody can do anything about that. You know, the only person who can do anything about it is the goalkeeper himself. You can practice as much as you like on the training pitch for as long as you like. But when things are happening like that, the manager's got no chance. I remember on here, Lewis, you saying in the summer, um, recruitment's, I think you said recruitment's everything, or recruitment's key. I can't remember the, the exact terminology. Is that a, a bigger, a, the biggest factor, or are there things the manager should be doing? Well, it's a lot of hindsight, and it's easy to criticise the manager, I know. But is there things we should be doing differently to get better results obviously you you've been in the dugout as a, as, as a manager at a lower level admittedly but you you know how the challenges a manager faces where what do you think's gone wrong mostly overall for me uh, uh it's a it's a it's a big factor like you said i mentioned you 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 live and die by your recruitment and where your recruitment is normally come the end of the season you'll always end up how well you've recruited uh now when I look at Nottingham Forest in terms of since they've got back to the Premier League, I think the recruitment's been crazy. It's been sporadic. There's been no kind of thought behind it. That's just my opinion. Uh, I think from a manager's point of view, uh, I think that there's, there's players in there that, that Steve Cooper wanted. But there's also players in there that probably the owner and the owner's advisors have pushed for. That's no secret. That's just a that's just a factor of football. That's just how it works. And as a manager, you have to deal with that. Now, every manager knows going into that sometimes that you 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 have the players that you really want to push for, but there may be areas that you're not too keen. But maybe the head of recruitment or or the owner uh, wants to push for a different kind of player, and they're the kind of things that you have to factor to come into it. I think what's really 
not help the manager is that if you look at the recruitment, you look at the players, especially this season that's been brought in, not any of them are really hit the ground running. So straight away when you when it puts you under pressure because from an outside point of view, there's loads of players that have been brought in. So straight away it's like, well, they've spent money and there's loads of players that have been brought in, so it's fine. But when you actually look at it and strip it back, can you really name a player, name a signing that's really come in and, and hit the ground running? There hasn't been. So as you as you can see over the time, what he's done is reverted back to what he knows. And that's what managers do. When managers get in, in, in tough situations, even as a player, as Gary say, when you get in a t- you go through a tough spell, you simplify everything, you strip it back, uh, and you just try to go with what you what you know. And if you look, y- uh, Yates has come back in, uh, Nico Williams has come back in, and, and fair play to him. Do you know what I mean? I, especially Friday, I thought that the uh, them players performed really well. Uh, but it's but again, it's what we're looking at and we're looking at that 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 performance and thinking you know what some of them players who have come back in from the cold they've really stood up that's fine but again we're not that we can have our opinion but the decision lies with the owner and it's how the owner sees it and how the owner wants his team to be looking and how he wants the players in it and that's the continued problem what you're always going to have and I think there's just brought so much scrutiny in the cloud over the football club over, over the last month to six weeks that every week everybody is looking at Nottingham Forest they're looking at the result they're looking at the team they're looking at the players how many changes are made this week who's out this week is it going to be the D-Day it's no good for it it's no good for anyone and and, and and back to Greg's point from the start there just needs to be a cut-off point like I said Steve Cooper has done a fantastic job for this football club and for the city and like I said he he deserves more time than anyone but if you're going to make the decision and you want to go somewhere else, then make the decision. Do it. And and let's try and try and thank him for what he's done and we move on. If you don't want to make the decision and you want to keep him, m- make that clear. Give him the giant window and let's push on for the rest of the season. But this week-to-week thing, this, oh, this game, or oh, what happens this game, it's, it's no good for the manager. It's no good for the football club as a whole from people looking at it. And most of all, it's no good for the change room. Because that change room will start becoming toxic because they're becoming people in, people out. Some people are playing, then they're out the team. Well, now they're out the team. I don't think the manager likes me. Well, listen, the, the way they will look at it as a personal player is, well, it's probably best for me if a new manager comes in. That happens. Gary will tell you that happens in the change rooms. Not everyone is going to like Steve Cooper. Some players are going to like him. Some players are going to want him to stay. Some players are probably going to make the decision and think, you know what, it's probably best for me my own career if he goes and we get a new manager and a clean slate. So you have all them little things now in the change rooms that the manager's got to deal with on top of trying to get results, trying to keep everything under wraps. And it and it and it's a it's sometimes it becomes untenable for everyone. And that's why for me, uh from from, from a bigger point, it just needs to be a decision made. Right or wrong. Everyone's gonna have their opinions either way. That's that's that that's the reality of life and that's fine. But I think for everyone and for the football club to move on properly now to the end of the season and to stay in this foot in, in the Premier League, there just needs to be a cut-off point and we need to go one direction. Yeah, that's the thing for me, Greg. Like I do we can't carry on like this. So I think you either give the manager if you give the manager Bournemouth and he wins or lose, I don't think you change anything. You either give the manager the January window and time to integrate this, those players, or you make a change now. Like um I I'll put Boyne's just coming up here. Says um, the worry is we become a Leicester. I put the wrong comment up. I know that. Sorry, too many comments. We leave it too late on sentiment. We end up thinking we're too good to go down because there's a section of the fan base who are going to think it's it's mad to give Cooper January because we could have one win in 25 games. But I don't. Th- I think Lewis is a spot on this situation. You either you move now or you back the manager. Is that what has to happen, really? Yeah, I I thought we were too good to go down. I've thought that since the start of the season to probably. I don't know, end of November, but we're certainly not, are we? Luton are picking up points. Luton aren't a bad side. Bournemouth have, have got the form. Everton aren't even a discussion anymore. They're nowhere near it. Um, I think with us, and you have to look at Olympiacos because they it's the same owner. He's going to have the same thought process. They, they don't want a manager, do they? They want a head coach. They want someone to concentrate on the players they've got and, and they've chosen for them. So that's always been my 
concern that 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 they want someone just to manage that team on a on a weekly basis and that's it so i am surprised that it it hasn't happened yet so maybe we've got it wrong maybe they see a lot more in in cooper than than we believe and they just haven't come out to say it because they don't believe they have to because <laughs> i am really surprised that, that you know the rumors haven't got stronger and things haven't been said maybe the right manage, uh, head coach isn't out there for them um but like i said earlier and like lewis has certainly said it's just no good for anyone you're just waiting you wake up and you put sky sports news on and you think oh it's the yellow bar going to be up there so i see someone put in the comments a minute ago claiming they knew something you think oh god is that true and it's just it's not healthy at all again on saturday a very winnable game's coming up you'd, you'd feel if we don't get the right result there that 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 would be it and even the the ever optimistic people like myself the ever positives would be thinking yeah you know form is everything staying in the premier league is more important than, than anything at the minute and would it be would it be an option to see what else is out there? But it's all right saying sack him, but who's realistically the guy, you know? The names that have been banded about, they're not ones that you think, oh, yeah, they're there for us. That's that's the guy that's going to turn things around here. He's going to have a squad of players that have been half of them picked by someone, half of them picked by another recruitment team, half of them then the recruitment team got sacked and they got other people in. You know, it's just we need some stability. And the only way you get that is with time. And, you know, within we stay in this league for another season, you get another transfer window, recruit a, a few less players, but a few more quality and no last day transfer window madness that we always seem to get. Then you're going to see the stability grow and we'll slowly climb up this league. But the priority is stay in it, stay in there mm. quick. And the, January is so important for us. It really is to recruit well and to recruit the, the players that the coach wants and, and the recruitment team as well. Not this guy was his and this guy. We shouldn't even know that. We shouldn't know who picked who. But yeah. There we go. <laughs> but it's pretty, yeah. And it does show that, you know, there's different, there's so many different players signed for so many different roles, different tactics. Go on, Gary. Sorry. I mean, the thing is as well, you, you look at fixtures and you, you're now looking at opponents' fixtures in and around you. And people, you know, I read something the other day saying the teams around us have got very winnable games over the Christmas period. You know, we look at our games, we've got Newcastle, we've got Manchester United. You know, Bournemouth's not going to be easy. Uh, but, you know, if, if you think it is, think again. But I, I, I just think if you're going to win football matches, you've got to have a striker up front. You know, it's, it's not right maybe to ask Alanga to do that. Uh, if you're going to put Chris Wood in the team, you've got to play to his strengths. And we didn't do that, I don't think, when he was in the team. He's he's good when he gets the quality in the box. I mean, you look at the Richarlison goal. Yeah, it was a great cross and everything. That's what strikers thrive on. You know, I watched the uh, the boy at Brighton um, up from the young lad. Is it Ferguson? Ferguson. And, Evan yeah, Ferguson. he's out. You know, I've been impressed with him. You know, he's out of the game for a while, but then he'll come up with something special. You know, you have to play to your strikers' strengths. And Chris Wood, I think you've got to get the ball in the box more than we do. We get in areas and. We just don't deliver. You know, you look, I watched the Everton-Burnley game, uh, the first half, and, you know, they play, they're one team who play to their strengths. They're players in that team. You know, they're all round, you know, round pegs in round holes. And they know what they're good at. And, you know, set pieces of what they're good at. And, you know, they've got the players in there to do that. I can't remember the last time we scored from a set piece. And somebody mm. told me we've got a new set piece coach. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, uh, from Brighton, yeah. yeah. So, Simon um, Rusk, I think his name is. You know, is. we don't defend them very well. And like Lewis said, both boxes, if you don't do it in both boxes, you're going to keep losing football matches. You know, we, we get in good areas and we, their keeper, yeah, he made a couple of, you know, half decent saves, but not, you know, things that you think, well, yeah, he's continually being stretched to Tottenham keeper. It's just, I, I, would, I would have to think he's got to go with an out-and-out -out striker. Because if you don't, the pressure will keep being put on if a Langer plays up front. You know, Chris Wood's on the bench and he comes on when maybe it's too late, you know, to get back in the game. You know, just start somebody who is an out-and-out -out striker and play to his strengths. You know, you don't have to keep playing it, you know, from the back all the time. This is really, you get it gets on my nerves. It's a thing in football that you seem to have to do. A lot of clubs, get the keeper has to be able to ping it 60 yards to feet. 
and you know you have to play it from the back despite you know sometimes you know making mistakes and getting it wrong play to your strengths play to the players you've got in there you know don't do what it, it's in the final third when I, it really annoys me when they throw the ball back 30 yards you know and then the next minute you're back in your own half it, you, having been you know the 18 yard box of the opposition our goalkeeper's got it you know throw the ball you know get a free kick you know it, it, it's, it's basic simple thought processes you know and um i i just don't think we we get the ball in early enough our thought process in the final third i don't think is always brilliant but we have the players that can do it uh, but uh, you you're not going to win games if you haven't got a you know a, a out and out striker i think that showed more than anything against uh, tottenham they had they you know he scored um so i i don't know it's it's it, it's a baffling game football at the moment for me in, in certain processes. Um, our fixtures coming up, by the way, are pretty, um, well, wretched all the way until March, really. I mean, we've got Newcastle, United, Brentford, Arsenal, Newcastle again, Liverpool. We've got a decent run in. It's pretty tough. It might might put a few managers off. Um, Lewis, one of the things I want to pick up on, um, like you say, the owner's not going to be happy with... Two hundred million pounds worth of talents on the bench, rightly or wrongly. Sangare, Dominguez. Does Steve Cooper have to bring them in, and does he have to get more out of them? I think people in the comments are saying, you know, it's the manager's job to get more out of the players we've brought in. What has to happen to those players that are frozen out? Not frozen out, out of the side at the moment. Listen, that happens. That happens, and and, and sometimes you sometimes you're going to be out the side, and sometimes managers are going to make decisions, and and you're not going to be a part of it. That's just part of being a uh, being in a in a part of a football squad uh, at any level. I think I think just on Gary's point, I think that's the that's the main problem. I think I've always said on here that Nottingham Forest, that when they've always got the good results, when they play, they play that low block, and they've had obviously last year they had Brennan, Gibbs White, and and, and Tywo, and obviously this year that same uh, formation. That's what they try and do. They try and sit in, and they wait, and they pounce on the loose and they break and they break at pace. And that's the problem when I say it comes back to recruitment. We, we took Gary's spot on when he says about Chris Wood. Every time Chris Wood has played and they played to their strengths, he scored goals. But it's very hard to then go into a team and they're, we're still playing as if we've got Tywo as the focal point. But again, that point, that comes back to the thing if, okay, if that's what we're going to do, that's the way we're going to set up. I think that's the best way we're going to get results in this league. We're going to sit in and play that low block. That's fine. Okay, you have time when something happens. Then you have to recruit to have the same characteristics. That's the problem. The problem is this, the recruitment so sporadic. If Tywo is out, which happens, sometimes you get injuries. Okay, you might not get a replacement that is uh, as good, but you're going to probably get a replacement that has the same characteristics so you can still play that same way. That's the problem. Tywo to Chris Rudd is night and day. And the thing is, when that change is happening and he's out, we're still playing as a team that we've got Tyrell up front. And it's a total opposite our Chris Wood plays. So that's when, again, it comes back to recruitment again. And all the other players, as you question then, if that's the way we're going to play, that's the that's the foundation we're going to set. OK, that's fine. The players might not, we might not be able to get better players in terms of that. But when we have to make that swap, if people get injured or we're struggling for form, we're putting in players with the same characteristics and hopefully over that time, then players will get more confident, get better, get more accustomed and they can then grow with the team. But you're swapping players, but you just swapping players and personnel instead of at the minute, it's you taking someone out. For, for, for instance, you've got Dominguez out, you're putting Yates in. Night and day. Night and day players. Completely different. Give a completely different output. So it's that point of understanding what we're going to do, how we're going to set up, what do we want? Okay, that's fine. We feel as a football club, together, that is the best way we're going to get results in this league for now. Perfect. So our recruitment plan of working together, we need to get players that is going to fit that system. And that's when you look at all these other play teams, people talk about Brighton. So that's what Brighton do. That's why they're so, That's why they continue to players leave and another one comes because they have a plan of the recruitment and they know what they're going to get. Okay, is Casado going? We're going to have another Casado. He's not going to be at Casado's level, but eventually he will. 
And that's what happened. Then players then sit behind as they, for instance, Brighton would have done. Casado would have been leaving. Brighton know he's leaving. The, the manager knows he's leaving. They get a player. He comes in, same characteristics. And over that time, before Casado leaves, that player is training, he's learning, he's watching, and he's understanding what does this team need from me. And as soon as they go, right, the bids come in, that player's gone, boom, okay, straight in. And that's how you look at it, that the transition of these other football clubs is a lot easier. And it's a lot easier because there's a plan. And that's just my opinion. I don't think there's that connection between the manager and the recruitment. I think it's just too sporadic. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, we shouldn't be going from a midfield of Mangala, Sangari, Dominguez to Kuyate, Yates and Mangala in the space of about four games. Like you say, they are two night and day. We don't. We, we've tried to move from a different plan of the low block that did work to what we would try to play didn't really work, and now we're back to the low block. It feels like we need to find a consistent path, really. Um, Lewis talks there about you know Greg trying to play two Taiwo with different players. I mean, Anthony Alanga uh, has done well this season, but he's no he's no Taiwo and he's no number nine, and um, you know someone needs to just hold up offside flags in front of him throughout this whole week, I think, and probably work on that, but. He's game, but he's not the answer, is he? We need to address that in January. Yeah, he's playing out of position as well, isn't he? If he's not, uh... but yeah, the offside thing it kills us. Even when we scored, I thought straight away, oh, he hadn't put the flag up, maybe. And then obviously, as soon as you see VAR come up, you knew, you knew it was going to be. Although it was so close, but yeah, it's something that is a training issue, isn't it? You know, you forget about all your recruitment and everything. Just if you keep getting it that much, then just drop a foot back. <laughs> you know, I'd rather we don't get the goal in the I mean, back of the net if it's going to be a mile offside and you have all Greg, that euphoria. Just look across be... the line. It's not rocket science. You're yeah, I mean, it was away. so close. It, it was right so close. Across. but Yeah, it was so close, though. I mean, that line, they were almost touching. But it's just too often, isn't it? it he's a good player. He's, we've seen his pace, which is it can really affect things. Uh, but it, it it does, it saps it out of you when you score and it's disallowed so quickly and you almost expect it to be disallowed as well. Cooper went straight to the screen, didn't he, when you watch it back and he was like waiting for that. He knew the decision before we all did. Um, yeah, it, things have got to change. Haven't they? But the only way things can change is with a solid recruitment in January. You know, the players are the players at the minute and it's all right saying that they're completely different, but that's all we've got. That's the only options, isn't it? If if a player's out of form, unfortunately, we can't just put a like for like in because they're not there. If a player gets injured like Taiwo, it's down to Wood and Origi who have proven so far they're nowhere near what we need. And that's why it falls on Alanga. And Alanga's probably creating as many, if not the most, chances. But unfortunately, he's going to get it because he's offside too often. The only way that changes is on the training ground and getting it right. I mean, should Yates, Todd Williams and Toffolo be our best players in games now, Gary? Does it matter who our best players are? No, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter who's who's you know best, who's worst, whatever. You've got to start winning football matches, pure and simple. You know, just we picked up a good point at Wolves. Yeah, we played well against Tottenham, but you know, we we didn't look a you know massive threat at times. Um, it, it's just a worry that up front we're, we're a little bit bereft at the moment. And if you continue to be like that, uh, you're going to, you're not going to get in games. Um, I mean, early in the season, you know, we, I said before I was at Crystal Palace and the Luton game, if we'd have won the Luton game and got something at Palace, we were in the top six, I think at that particular point, you know, so it's, it's gone from that to, you know, where we are now talking about what we're talking about now. And recruitment's always been paramount, no matter what, uh, era you're playing you know it's it's always been paramount to get it right within the system you want to play and I think maybe because we play that many different systems um, you know you've got to try and fit players in uh, positions they, they might not you know fancy so it's it, it is about tra a lot of it's about training ground getting it right there but I've watched training on several occasions and it's always professional it's always very frenetic it's always very you know, it, it, totally unlike what you see on a Saturday afternoon when we go out there sometimes. Um, and when you get under pressure in, in the Premier League, which, you know, we are at the moment, 
your confidence does get sapped. Lewis will tell you, you know, anybody, you know, when you're losing games, your confidence can go. And uh, you, you can bet your bottom dollar there'll be agents in the of the players at the moment uh, in their players' ears saying, you know, well, if it all goes uh, a little bit wrong, we'll get you somewhere else. And, you know, those sorts of things are thrown into players' minds by agents. And, uh, you know, that doesn't help the situation either. So there are a lot of factors going in and around what's going on at the moment. All the, you know, the indecision, like we're saying, we don't know from one uh, game to the next what's going to happen. You know, all those factors don't help anybody whatsoever. Uh, you know, you've got to try and get that first 11. You've got to get somebody up front. I said it before, Lewis played up front. We all know how important strikers are. And, you know, if, if it doesn't work when you've got a striker, in, I, I would just go back to basics. I mean, I, I, what, like, again, I've got to keep mentioning Everton. They just get the ball in the box with quality. They don't try and pick anybody out but because they know there's going to be players in there who can do you know, the job, if it, if the delivery is right. You know, the centre-half scored yesterday. You know, Michael Keane, you know, it's a, a terrific finish. And they should have had one. Was it McNeil at the far post in the first half? You know, he headed it across. You know, they're getting players in those areas. We did that with Toffolo the other week. He scored the header and uh, should have probably scored the second one with his, his, his head. The easier chance. When, when you're up against it, go back to the basics. You know, don't try and be clever because you'll keep making mistakes. And that's what we're doing a little bit. You know, just go route one sometimes, mix it up. I, I just remember um, last season against Newcastle when we scored that brilliant goal, um, Emmanuel Dennis, wasn't it? Yeah. We turned there, sent a half, and he panicked. And he mishit the ball. And, you know, we scored a fantastic goal. But you don't see that happen a great deal now. You know, it works, you know, Everton work it like that. You know, Luton work it like that. Sheffield United do that. You know, they're trying to get the points by doing the basics right. And uh, if you do that, you've got half a chance. But when you continue to make mistake after mistake, you know, it just gets demoralising. I suppose, like, Lewis, everything, I think you said to me on Friday, everything's off the cuff, there's no structure. Our chance creation comes from, like, I, I think it's like chaos ball, really. Near Cate long throws, corners there's nothing up front do we have to I, I don't like this midfield of Kwiaty I feel like we have to do something different and open up a little bit more do we have to play a Dominguez or someone to bring some attacking structure because I just don't think we can we had a lot of shots against Spurs and the performance was good in a lot of areas but how many nothing, the top, Matt? how many were on target I think it was the other stat man two wasn't it I <laughs> <laughs> Toffolo's header was close and Nico hit the post but we were already 2-0 down by then we should have been 1-0 down obviously with Turner but do we have to try and find something more in the final third do we have to play a Dominguez we have to play a hudson Adoy or something because it's so limited what we have going forwards at the moment No, listen I, I, I completely agree and like you, you look at Friday night and a lot of it a lot of it does look off the cuff and but again, I, I said when you when you look at Forest over the last few seasons, their best moments, they haven't been even when we've won games, even when we're playing well. And that can be my continued point. We've never played teams off the park. We've never a massive pass move and cut through teams. It's always been very much like I said that low sitting in, be solid. But we've had the players, and how many times that you look at last year went up the other end, Brennan one nil, Brennan two nil. Oh, Tywo. And, that, that, and that's the difference. But the point is, sometimes I think we look and think this is completely different from last year. It's not. It's actually not. The fact is, sometimes we're just not getting them goals. We're just not scoring them goals at them certain times. There's a lot of games that I watched last year that when you actually stripped it back and looked at it, did we deserve to win? Probably we didn't. But we, what would happen, with, with especially at home last year, we'd be under the cosh quite a lot. We, we get a little bit of luck, which you need. And then the other, up the other end, we'll go and score against the run of play. And then they gave the whole game shifts. And I think this year, when you talk about chances, it's, it's, I don't think we've ever been that team that is cutting through teams, constantly playing, constantly have this kind of way of playing. I think we've just had a structure. We've sat in, we've been solid, and we've waited to pounce on teams' mistakes. And whereas this year, the goals and and, and and them mistakes aren't coming or we're not punishing them. You can change the formation. Look, listen, I think I looked at it again on Friday night. I think Mangala 
for me, is the best midfielder in the, in the whole squad. And I think that he needs to be a focal point. I think at times he's playing too deep, uh, especially with the with the players that you have around him and then you've got in the squad. Someone with that ability needs to be, I'm not saying to go and play behind a striker, but it needs to be in areas where that, that ability is a bit higher up, 30, 40 yards up, where he can start putting passes and, and, and cutting teams open. I think he's playing a little bit deep. I think the spark of Dominguez and, the, and, the, and his legs and, and little... Do you know, when I look at it, it was maybe Friday when he came on, I, I just think to myself, what's happened to Danilo? Like, when you look at last year, you look at the impact he made. You look at when I said he played deeper and the look at the goals, that the important goals he scored and the kind of impact he had running from a little bit deeper and making them runs in, in for them opportunities. There's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of players that aren't playing up, probably up to them standards. So we can sit here and think, right, what do we need to do? Do we need to create more chances? Of course we do. But sometimes football is quite simple. And sometimes it's not that much different to what you had before, but goals change games and goals change dynamics. And there's so many times that I, I guarantee you that we've not played that well last year and we've walked away from the city ground, won the game. And again, when as Gary tell you, when you win the game, paints over everything. No one, no one worries about anything. No one forgets about anything. Forgets about the little flaws. Do you know what? Don't worry about that. We've won. We've won. And some when that stops, when them goals stop going in, when you stop winning games, it's then that big song and dance. But when you actually look back at it, if you looked across the teams and looked across the games, there's not that much difference in performances. I can promise you. It's just goals. Mm -hmm. Goals change games. That's it. Goals change games. And sometimes if you look at that performance again on Friday, was it a little bit better? OK, if we go and score, if we go and win that game, we're not having half of these conversations that we're having now because you've won the game. And that's just football. And that's just how football will always be perceived. When you win games, it paints over cracks and people forget about all the things. And when you start, it's like, what's happening? Nothing's happening. You're just not getting the look that you got before. You're not getting the chances or they're just not falling for you. That's, well, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's I think if we go in nil nil at half time against Spurs, I think we could win that game. But because we can see that we did two minutes into injury time, like we've done so many times over the past couple of seasons, not just this season, you know, you, you lifted the whole stadium's lifted, the, the stadium went flat, and everybody was saying, Oh, here we go again, conceded in injury time, blah blah blah. You know, it's little things like that. And it's just switching off for moments that we've done so many times. And, uh, you know, they, they are game changers. Against right. a team like Top, you've got no chance of, of, of winning games if you keep doing that. Yeah, it's just moments. All football games are moments. And certain, sometimes you get them little bit of looks. Like, perfect example, Turner made a great save off Son. What was it? First five minutes. If that goes in, it's a, I, I feel you look at the crowd will turn. It's like, oh my God, five minutes in, we one nil down already. We could probably come away from that losing three, four, five nil. That's how quick it can change just from that save. Turner makes that save. We could end up winning that game, but that's what sometimes you have to strip it back. And games are just based on moments, small details. And sometimes they go against you. And sometimes they go with you. And let's not some try and when you lose games, try and Always people try and critique everything like there's sometimes major problems, but actually there's not that much difference. You're just not getting that little bit of luck or things aren't going for you. Other teams have cottoned on to a little bit of how you want to do things. And that's it. And that's it. It, 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 it can go either way. And uh, I say Gary made a point earlier about early in the season, the Crystal Palace and the Luton game. You have positive results there. We aren't even talking here. We aren't even talking about the, probably the manager under scrutiny. We, we're probably going into January transfer really, really positive. That's it. That's football. And, and and that it will continue to be that. It's small details that, if they go against you, can can sometimes make everything seem a lot worse. Mm. Uh, that Mangala point is great. I hadn't really considered it. Like he's beating two players on the edge of our own box and then releasing another midfield ahead of him or a right winger. If he was put 30, 40 yards further up, he'd be releasing Morgan Gibbs White or Elanga. Yeah, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that. Just, just, um, just on, it's only when you sorry, mate. It's only just when you've got Yatesy, you've got Sangari, you've got 
them kind of players Kiate around you. Go and release him. Let him mm. go and let him go and impact the game. Let him go and be a bit high. Like I said, not a number 10, not that high because that's not him, but let him go and be a little bit higher and let the players that you've brought in who are a bit more uh, deep players, let them go and sit in there. Like I said, him making turns and going through two players inside his own half, it, you know what I mean? It's not, it's, not, it's not beneficial for him or the team. He's got too much quality, in my opinion. Yeah, that three is too defensive. I take, I take Kuyate out. Well, you, you're both midfielders. Of, you know, when we played in the teams, Lewis will tell you as well, I played with Steve Hodge, played with Neil Webb, I played with Ian Bowyer. You know, midfield players who used to go past you as a striker, you don't very often see that anymore. And I think that's half the problem. You know, the pressure then is on the, the, the striker up front by himself. And, you know, the creations, it, it becomes less. Um, and you're right, you've got to release somebody. And we don't seem to be doing that. I mean, with Brennan there last season, Gibbs White thrived because the two of them were causing problems together. I think when, um, you know, a one year's in the side, I think Alanga looks a lot better, you know, with the pace. You saw the goal against Arsenal we scored early in the season. You know, that that's that sort of break that we can do, you know, with pace. But when you've got no striker up there, you know, you, you're really losing Alanga's pace and that threat from a counter because he's up there and he, he doesn't look comfortable up there. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you've, you've just got to try and get your best 11 in your mind and just pick a way through it and be positive. Get on the front foot. You know, don't concede. Like I said before, the the change at the back is the right one. We look more solid. Yes, we conceded goals again, but they're, like I say, always avoidable. But then, you know, go to your next line, which is your midfield, and get that spot on because you need that creativity. I think the pressure on Gibbs White may, you know, may, you know be a little too much at times. He's expected to be the Ward Prowse. So all the pressure's on him. You know, other players have got to relieve that pressure and, uh, you know, sort of help create a little bit more because, you know, that's one of the problems. You're not creating, you're not scoring. No. Um, last thing on midfield, I thought Yates had a really good game, actually. Spurs fans hated him. I was talking to one earlier, which I think is a really good thing because he set the tone of our good spell in the first half. Well, Nico Williams, you know, he, he's had his best game for us. And I think he was our best player, you know, going forward. He can create problems. He's a good wing-back. He's a good wing-back. Um, clock's ticking. Do we have to change goalkeeper, Greg? Can we go, you know, it's like musical chairs at the moment, but can you stick with Turner or do you have to go back to Flacodemos now? Um, I'd personally go back and I didn't think I'd be saying that. I'd, we were waiting for the change to happen and then obviously it happened and we got thumped 5-0 and, it, and it's gone back. But I just think Turner for his shot stopping and excellent shot stopping, we've had too many mistakes and maybe the trust isn't there again. But... I don't think it's going to solve a problem, sadly, just swapping the goalkeeper, is it? Um, just quickly on Nico as well. He's had his best two games for us. He's shown what he can do as he was shown towards the end of last season. So that is one positive from from a, 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 another negative weekend. But yeah, mm. I mean, keepers, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference at the minute. But I personally would, would change again. I just think Turner, after that weekend, he's going to be, you know, just down on his look and maybe it'll, I don't know, to be honest, just give it a go. You shaking your head at change goalkeepers or don't change goalkeepers, Lewis? I'm just, the situation, if I'm honest, I, it, again, it's like football is this new trend. Arsenal's done it. Let's have two keepers. Fight. I've never played in, I've never played in a team that has two keepers fighting to be the number one. You have a number one and you have a number two. That's the reality of it. And okay, everyone knows in that football club who the number one is. The problem is about goalkeepers is that it's the one of the hardest it's the hardest position because if you make a mistake, more than likely it ends in a goal. Yeah, that's it. You, you, everyone makes mistakes on the football pitch, but as a goalkeeper, more than likely it ends in a goal. Again, like what you said about swapping it again to swap it back to what for him to make another mistake to then swap it back. Like goalkeepers are going to make mistakes. That's just the reality of football. It's that you have to have that faith in this is my number one. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to push forward. Because the team needs to know that. Can't just keep swapping goalkeepers. The spine, that goalkeeper, two centre-halves, is massive. That connection, massive. That needs it is to be... It. That, 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 that yeah. has to be for your work. And I know that, uh, uh, obviously, you did a bit with, with Kelv, Matt. And I know Kelv would have told you the same. 
That's it. They have to have that structure. Uh, and they have to know you've got the goalkeeper behind them who they have faith in. Can't just keep swapping. And this is and this is the point is that when you say about he's made a mistake, swap it back. Well, where's the line? Where, where, where do you, where do you stop? Do you know what I mean? Like this, this is this is the point. You have to go. This is my number one. That's my number two. Now, if someone continually keeps making mistakes, making mistakes, then you have to make that change, and the number two comes in to 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 stay in the team. But you can't just keep thinking, well, he's had a bad game, he's had a bad couple of games, or he's made a bad mistake. Right, other one in. Like you, you, it doesn't work like that, and it can't work like that because, for, especially for them to as professionals, you it just doesn't. I'm sure Gary will, 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 will add to it. It just doesn't work. It, you can't. You can't work. Look at the problems Arsenal are having. That's at that top level with top two top goalkeepers. Look at the problem. It doesn't work. All it does is just see through the whole dressing room, the whole thing that nobody's sure. The manager's not sure. Either goalkeeper's not sure. And if anything, it just breeds more kind of people. Just it, it, it kind of just makes everyone more nervous. Yeah, you can't be down, 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 can't be nervous. Away, problem. It's like you you're right about the connection with the centre halves. I mean, at the end of my career, I, I played with Paul Futcher at Grimsby, and we had Steve Sherwood in goal behind us, and we got two automatic promotion. I'm not saying the three of us were, you know, it was all down to us, but. That connection helps, you know, that experience, that knowledge of a goalkeeper. I mean, I played with some, lucky to play with some brilliant goalkeeper. I mean, Shilton, Steve Sutton, who you see down there. I think people are asking him to come back out of retirement now. Tutti, uh, you know, played with Van Broekelin, Hans Sagers, and you're so, re, you know, dependent on those goalkeepers, especially when I went and played uh, centre half. You know how important a massive shout from them that, you know, the goalkeeper behind you is. But that it doesn't work like that anymore. The, the, it doesn't seem like there's a you know many captains out on a pitch, um, you know, telling you what to do. But I would tell either of the forest keepers, right, don't take any chances now. You know, if it comes your way, just kick it. You know, and have somebody up front like Chris Wood, you know, and play somebody off him with the second ball. You know, if he doesn't win the ball, you know, you're going to get somebody close enough to win that second ball. I don't think we'd win that many second balls, Forrest. You know, just go back to basics. It's not rocket science. It really isn't. But it's such a critical position that I think we're going to have to look in January, aren't we? Because it's cost us many, many times this season, probably four or five times, big, big goalkeeping well, saying, errors. And Greg, just as a goalkeeper, keep goal. Don't try and be clever. Don't try and do mm. something that you're not strong, you know, is not your strength. Goalkeepers, we used to be there to save you so many points a season by saving you know, goalkeeper, you know, that keep goal. They're not keeping goal anymore. They're being asked to ping it 60 yards. They're, you know, the, the number of times you, you see them uh, sidestep a striker. Lewis would have said, I, I would have loved to have played now with what goalkeepers are doing. My word, you know, it, it's, you, you'd take it off them and, you know, you'd, they just go too far. They're expected to do too much. Just play goalkeeper Save your team some points. Don't try and be clever. And you, you might just get on the right road to recovery. It is mm. such a strange mentality, though, isn't it? Which we all we all know it. That if, if the central defender has a bad few games and they get swapped out, Murillo gets swapped for, I don't know, McKenna or something, you don't discuss it too much and you don't really feel sorry for them. But the goalkeeper is such a massive like it's spotlight just, on them, isn't I, it? And that's why... If we miss a sitter as a striker, it's there. If a goalkeeper makes a clangor, yeah. there. Be a midfielder. But I mean, the, the the whole like process of swapping the goalkeeper. You know, you swap your striker out. It's like oh, okay, he's starting this week. The goalkeeper. It's like oh no, like feel yeah, for but... him, and and you do, and it's just I, I don't know. I, I, We've done that I, I too much, know. though. We've we swapped centre halves too much. We swapped mm. fullbacks too because much. we haven't got an answer. Oh, well, it's, yeah. I think we swapped near Kate out too much. We, I think we swapped. The people are going to hate this. When we beat Chelsea, we swapped Joe Warrell out too soon. I think we, he was fine in a back three. There's a bit of hindsight in that, I, I know, but but I think, on, but, I, but I do think, I, I do think on that. It, it, it's, it's like anything. You can are swapping all the players. Sometimes players just need time. They just need time yeah. to play. They just need a run of games. No matter what position it is, they just need a run of games. Confidence. Thinking, do you know what? I've got a run of games here, and I've got to keep the shirt. 
that's just it. It's, it's very simple. It's just confidence. Any Anything you do in life, all you want is confidence. So many players play better. Oh, you know, he, he's playing well, he's playing well, he's playing well. It's just confidence. He's not playing well. Well, he's not all of a sudden overnight become a, become a bad player. Just lost his confidence, has lost his way. That's why so many players, as you find, they leave one football club, go to another club. Well, we didn't see that here. It's not rocket science. He's just got a bit of confidence. He's in a different environment. Things are going for him a bit more. That's it. But sometimes players just need a run of games. A run of games. He can't just be going yeah. in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't like when I play, can't do it. I don't know a player who can. You can't just keep coming in, out, in, out, and expect to hit the ground running. It doesn't work like that because you, you're so out of sync. You need to get training. That's how you can train Monday to Friday or we you can you can do everything. Hundred percent. Nothing you're is like on. a game. Nothing yeah, is like on. a game. And, yeah. and then but that's this is why I you can yeah. feel completely, you can feel training. Oh, I've trained for six weeks. I haven't played a game. I'm fine. You get on the pitch. Gary will tell you, you just, it's like, what? I don't even know where I am. I can't even get yeah. close to anyone. That's it. Yeah. Because it's a different, it's a different reality. Playing a, uh, on a match day is completely different. And sometimes it's so hard for players to come in. Right. You need to hit the ground running. Right. Two games. You haven't been up there. Right. You're out. It's impossible. Doesn't work. I mean, you can understand, you know, when things aren't going for you, you, you want to change things. It's natural instinct to change it. But like you say, Lewis, I think, you know, you've got to say, right, get my best 11 in my head as a manager, as a coach, and say, right, they're the ones I want out there. Give them half a dozen games. And, you know, that, that unity togetherness might just build. And if, you know, if, if you're injury free, just keep it like that for three or four games. You know, just see how it works. You can't lose you by can, it because yeah. can't all you can ask for as a player is, and even on the management side, which I've done now, all you can do is give everyone an opportunity. As a player, as a manager, give you an opportunity. A player won't grumble. Give me an opportunity, fair opportunity. If I don't do the business, I don't deserve to play. That's it. And that's the thing of you. That's what sometimes you have to do. You have to give these players an opportunity to run the game now if they continually keep making the same mistakes but also you have to look at the body language you look at that you look at the application sometimes p players can play in a game and they can try everything it's just not going through just not going through and it, and and that can happen and but you can still see the the core details in there that it will turn it will turn because they're doing the right things and it will eventually turn and then the players that aren't doing it but i just think there's been that much change swapping and changing it's you look at everyone around you, as as we said as well about the goalkeepers and centre halves. If I'm playing every week and I've got a centre midfield partner who's different every week, how are we going to keep? How are we going to have a connection? We're going up against a, a team that's them them two centre midfielders have played in the last 10, 15 games. Solid partnership. I've got a different partner every week. He doesn't know my game. He's like, right, okay, I play with him. He's a bit more defensive. That allows me to go forward. Well, this week I'm playing with someone. So all these all these little things, it's so hard to play against these teams at the top level. Like I said, at the top level, anything you're out, anything you slack on, they'll they'll take advantage of. They'll take advantage of you because that's why the players are playing at that level. Because because yeah. it, because it's the best. And any any little situation that you're not prepared, any situation that you're undercut, they'll prey on the weakness, and they, and yeah. they, and they will. Yeah, I do think we've got the building blocks of a consistent team. Like I think the back three is fine. The wing backs are doing really well. I'd change one midfielder for one more advanced midfielder, probably Dominguez, and then sign a striker, and then do what you will with the keepers. I mean, you can, we can't afford to spend 10 million quid on another goalie, so maybe you go out and get someone on loan, or you're back for Kodimos. I know Lewis doesn't want to change Turner, but I just don't see him as a number one. Um, so personally, I think you've got to run with Vakodimos or sign someone on loan. I don't know. You, you can afford to spend ten million if it means we stay up, though. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we spent ten million on Vakodimos already, so yeah. we're, we're basically pissing that up the wall if we mm. don't give him a go. But he's not—he's not done particularly well. I, said, yeah, and I can't certainly. remember. I can't remember what ex player said it on here, but it was the fact that. A player always seems to be better in the fans' eyes when they're sat on the bench, don't they? And we seem to be doing oh, every, a lot of that. Every at the minute. player said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lewis is the best midfielder we've ever had. Now he's sat on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, last five minutes before we go, we've already gone longer than normal. I've done an absolutely horrific job of trying to get people to, to subscribe to this channel. Do us a favour and get us past 4,000 subs as we try and claw back to where we were in the old days. So if you're enjoying this, just like and subscribe. That would be a massive help. Just quickly, um, on the red card, there was some debate in the WhatsApp group, one of the WhatsApp groups, I mean, a couple of people saying it wasn't a red card. I thought it was, definitely. What, what did you think, Greg? A hundred percent could have broke his leg, you know, half an inch the other side, and it's a disgrace of a challenge. It, I know slow motion always makes them look worse, and it's the one thing we said before the game that Spurs have got a red card in them. It's just such a shame that you know all these minutes that we've had playing against ten men, we haven't been able to figure out how to capitalise on it. But yeah, it was without question a red card. Yeah, Gary, absolute certainty. It was reckless. It was needless as well. There was no danger there. Yeah, but, I yeah, think it was. I mean, uh, Spurs fans were saying we rough them up. I think we were physical with them, but that was a definite red for me. Lewis, you wouldn't like to have been on the uh, the wrong end of that one, would you? No, straight away. Like I said, I I, I actually seen it. Like when I when I seen it happen, I knew straight away what happened. And I was saying to the people around me, "It's a red," and I knew it was going to go to far. I knew it was going to change it because you could just see the way he came in, and it's just the 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 best thing out of that is that. That Yates has come away, uh, you know what I mean, with no with no serious injury, and he can and he can uh, he can play next week, and I think that's the that's the best thing to come out of it because, like I said, if he catches him like that, it's uh, you don't you don't know what damage he could have done. The yeah, great true. against ten men with you know Brighton Lewis don't get sent off with a key player, you know we couldn't figure it out. We, you know they were down to ten men Tottenham for a while, we couldn't figure it out. You know, it's it's disappointing in that respect that you, you can't get closer uh, when that happens in a game. So we need I, to... I just sorry, just on just on that last point of the ten man get like sometimes you know these you talk about Brighton, you talk about Tottenham, these teams that are so tactically astute, they're so good tactically. Sometimes it's harder playing against ten men, and that it might sound really crazy, but sometimes as a they're they're that tactically good going down to 10 men actually helps them because it actually keeps them into their zone a bit more and they don't be so expansive. So I think sometimes people always look, they go down to 10 men straight away. Oh, it's easy. One man. But sometimes these teams are that tactically good and that tactically kind of understood of what they're doing. And they do practice going down to 10 men in training and they're actually harder to break down. I think it's the way you go about it. I think it's predictable uh, how you do it by just banging the ball in the box and trying to put pressure on. But like you said, they come more, more compact. Uh, the other centre-half for Brighton, um, he came to the fore when Dunk went off. He was commanding. You've got to try, you've got to be, you know, a little bit cute. You've got to try and play around them, you know, and, and be patient and, it, it's understandable that you're not patient when you're up against 10 men because you think, right, let's get in the box, you know. But, you know, you can work a way around it and you can, you know, make a difference in that final third if you, you think your thought process is a little bit better. Yeah, we, we never hit the byline, really, and we're not pulling back low crosses. We're crossing it from too deep all the time and it's just not not really working. Um, right, we've gone on for an hour and 10 minutes, so we should really uh, finish because we've got a whole week of stuff to chat about. So, um, Greg, anything you want to say before we depart? You mean nothing to. from me for once no just uh yeah give it a subscribe i know it's my wife's in the comments now so she's figured out how to uh get on youtube so i might have to get rid of the comments on next show hey, you'll be pleased you said that <laughs> <laughs> gary anything from you before we go no i think we've said it all really i think you've just got to stick with you know what we've got at the moment but you know just pick that your best 11 in your mind and just you know, change things up a little bit, be a little bit more positive, get on the front foot, because I think, you know, you can, there is predictability in football. And uh, at, at times, you know, especially at home now, teams have worked us out a little bit better. Last season, it was the Fortress. Now I've lost, you know, three on the trot. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's about getting that 11 in your mind. We have to have a striker up front, because if we don't, uh, you know, you're just going to create less chances. And, you know, it's, it's, the pressure increases on everybody. Lewis, any words before we depart? I know you've got to get your car in the garage, so the clock's ticking. No, no, no. Good, no, nothing. nothing for me. I, mean, I just think we're at a bit of an inflection point in the season, really. You either 
make a managerial change now for me, or you give the manager January and you he's got to pick a consistent team. And he sort of started doing that, but we need a, a bit more, we need to be more sophisticated. And I think that will come from signing a striker, hopefully. So that's where I'm at personally. Make a change now or back the manager, I would say. Right, we can discuss this more through the week. Uh, we'll probably do something tomorrow. I might do a video on AFCON and how it impacts us. Then back on Wednesday with Seb Hutchinson, who commentated on the game for Sky, and he's a really good contributor. And then match preview on Thursday, and then post-match stream on Saturday. And then it's Christmas. So, uh, yeah, we shall leave it there. Thanks for everyone who's watched along, 500 of you with us which is great to have your company for so long. Very much appreciated. Do like and subscribe. Give us a good review on iTunes, et cetera, et cetera. I read it all and appreciate all the support we've had so far. Greg, thank you very much. Cheers. See you all down the nav pretty much next Saturday. Absolutely. Can't wait. Absolutely. Fantastic sponsors. Uh, Gary, thank you very much. Yeah, pleasure as always. Very good. Certainly was. And Lewis, thank you very much. No, no problem. Any time. Good man, good man. And we'll try and get Kelvin Wilson back on in this kind of regular role that Lewis and Gary do as well because he was really good and I think uh, he's up for it. So check out that Kelvin Wilson episode if you haven't. In the meantime, have a good day, everyone, and we shall see you soon.